Alright everyone, welcome to another new spankin' out with this video. It's your boy Ken Atsuki and here and today I bring to you something that I was just thinking of. Now, just know that this is one of possibly ten ideas that I will be spitting out uh, out all day today. Okay? This is what if female Deku well, it's more such betrayed in order for the things I have lined up to work the way I want them to. As we see, so without any further ado, let's start with our backstory. Long ago, before time had a name. Before time had a name, and before the ground was as ruled by humans or any creature, there was a war, not of the earth, but of the skies. In a, on a mysterious, on a mysterious, always moving realm that was not that had no ground. This place was called the Heavens, or Remora. Remora was the beautiful home of peace and, and celestial beings. However, Remora, it was Coronation Day, Day of the King of Remora. Things were going smoothly, peaceful, happy. They were celebrating an another 10,000 eons of peace and prosperity of Remora. Until... Eventually, he, as Madara Uchiha once said, the selfish act intent to preserve peace initiates wars, and hatred is born in order to protect love. Now what do I mean by that? It is quite simple. Bullying. One of the, the celestial prince was bullied, and bullied all of his entire life by everyone who he was not related to. And even then, his life was a struggle. The prince was enraged, but he held in his rage. As he was supposed to be an ish, I'm protecting celebrating a, a long era of prosperity and peace and love. However, all he could feel was hatred and rage. As when the coronation happened, he snapped. As those who had wronged him wronged him in the biggest of ways. Betrayal. Harm. When he thought it was his coronation, everyone tricked him. And as the coronation was a week early, they tricked him and put acid on his and put ethereal acid on his face. Cut him, bruised him, outcasted him. They made him look like a freak. But he endured it, and when the week of the real coronation happened, the bullies tried to say that he would be the worst king imaginable, that he's a freak and a useless one at that. But before they even could, the prince would chuckle and laugh, as the bullies thought that he was laughing at them 
as they would rush over at the prince and punch him in the chest. However, but before they could even punch him in the chest, something strange appeared out of nowhere. A wall made out of some sort of black, black un, some sort of black magic appeared. As the prince would only smile, as a giant, and as appeared to be a giant tentacle, would come out of the ground and would choke the poor, the person who was going to punch him in the chest. As he just smiled, as everyone else was confused on why the prince was acting like this, until he revealed that all of this hatred, all of this bullying, and violence, and rage, had transformed him from equal kind prince into a demonic, onic warlord of evil, vengeance, and hatred. As they called him from that day, <clears throat> as they called him from that day, oblivion. However, many years, however, or about 2,000 years later, the war, it has been 2,000 years into it into this war as we see a, as we see a man and just a regular or what appears to be an old old man walking up and rushing up towards oblivion as oblivion simply tries to kill him by creating a, by creating a spike of dark shadows out of the ground. However, Oblivion is stopped. And how Oblivion's attack is stopped. As it turns into shadow and just dissipates. As he then says, what, what the? As he then looks and sees that this old man was no, no ordinary warrior. But he was enlightenment, the only thing. And as enlightenment was one of the supreme gods of order. And now enlightenment had obviously the power of light and was the strongest of the gods. As oblivion was amazed and confused on why such an all-powerful god would waste his time fighting him. As Oblivion would, as the god would charge Oblivion, Oblivion would do the same. After a long, hard-fought battle, the god would create a arm and would create something. He would create Eight. a sort of cauldron as he would and then as he would create it right above oblivion and would slam it right on top of him as then we hear oblivion scream oh! As the cauldron would be lifted, as we merely see two, as we merely see an unconscious, beaten up prince, and one bullet.
and two black apples. Enlightenment could sense the power of these very apples. It was all for they were the physical culmination of all the hatred that oblivion had suffered and had inside of him. As he feared that this power was far too much, much as he would lock it and as he would seal them away in an unknown, in a unknown realm. However, after, or however long, long, long after, the seal was broken, and the two apples fell to the mortal realm. As, well, you might be asking, how did the apples get to the, to the physical, I mean, to the mortal realm? As they grew in the form of a tree, a tree with only two apples hanging from it. The black apples, as this tree was called the cursed tree of Eve of nightmares, as it had this demonic evil aura coming from it. The apples, anyways, eventually quirks would come, as there were those who were. Curious of the apple's power, or what made the apples, and of what made this tree so dark and so evil, as they had, as they would use their quirks to eventually find out that the apples held some sort of darkness greater than any inside, as he would merely as the, they would then lock up the apples on two different halves of the earth as in what used to be protected areas he hid one anyways the old government hid one one of the apples in japan and the other in America, as that is where we begin our story. Six hundred years later, after the first, I mean, six generations after the first generation of quirks, eighty percent of the human race has quirks. Well, no, ninety. Almost a hundred percent of the race's quirks. However, there are, however, two people are born without them. Now, of course, one of them is Azuka and is Azula Midoriya. Azula was born with no power and was hated for this. As we go to, to her fourth Earth birthday, her parents would abandon her in the middle of the streets, where she would have to steal and survive on, on the streets for most of her life. Until one day, when she was 14, she would be searching for food as she would be in what appeared to be a old, rusty bunker of sorts. This was her home of sorts, her base, her refuge from the rest of the world. As she would look and see 
inside of her refuge too. I'm one strange sight. An apple. An apple black as night. And that was black and purple. As for at first she thought there that it was poisoned, so she would not eat it. We skip to the last day of middle school. She of course would be outside would use a ladder to watch school and to basically watch and learn from school through the windows. However, she would always get caught and beaten up mercilessly by bullies such as Bakugo. However, eventually she would be given a chance to prove herself by all might. She finally felt loved. After, now after she went to UA, she felt loved, happiness. As she thought that there was no one else in the world who would ever feel that pain again, but she was wrong. As in America, in the slow, sweaty, crime-ridden streets and the low, dirty, swampy, crime-ridden streets eats of New York. We see a, we see a second woman and we see a second girl. As she is being chased by people who have re by a group of men who've realized she has no power. She can't defend herself, so what's to stop them from doing whatever they want with her? As they're chasing her, as she would fall down a subway shaft on accident, a old subway shaft on accident, as the ground beneath her would collapse. while she was running. As, well, she would be hurling, she would be barreling down this, this shaft all the way down to a old government research lab. And there she would find it, an apple that was in a case that said Ed, and that was in a case that said, unless of extreme dire emergencies, never eat. Apple can grant unimaginable power to the, to the one who eats it. However, it is highly ill-advised. Now, obviously, the girl would not care she would scarf the apple down whole. Her hair would then change and her eye color would change as her, even her clothes would change. As she would then become from that day on known as the number one villain in the world, Nightmare. She was the mo as we go back to Deku. She would be as it is an average day. Hey, got you way as Zula went out for some, basically to get some lunch for her friends. However, a text would have been delivered to them saying. I'm showing false pictures of Azula being in with the League of Villains and giving them private documents. Now, as we know, this is to this was Toga. 
However, they did not care. The bull. However, these jerk. However, the students were blinded and did not care. Their first reaction was that she was as a villain. And when Azula walked in, they would beat her bloody. Now, of course, some students decided to not hurt her. These students were... And these students were Todoroki, Momo, Tokoyami, and Jiro. As, as Aizawa and the other teachers of Yue were the only, were the only other ones who believed her, along with Class 1B. However, All Might and everyone else thought of her as a traitor and a villain. They would beat her till she, till it felt like she was dying. As by this time, Azula would have read about out and would have done some tests about the apple, revealing that it was highly destructive and highly powerful. As she would rush over, and as she would limp slowly to her bag, where should we see he her unzip it? As Bakugo would rush up to her and try to explode her face. However, she would grab the apple and would begin and would just swallow it whole. And then would begin devouring it as quickly as she possibly could. Would bite by bite until the apple was completely gone and there was not even a core. As suddenly, out of her vein, as suddenly, right as Bakugo was about to explode, load her face, a black, t a black and ye a black and yellow tentacle would pop right out of her back. Her hair would change, and so would her clothing, and her eyes. As the tentacle would pop out of her back, and she would then say, Bakugo Katsuki, in a terrifying voice as she would look directly at Bakugo. As he would have no clue what the hell just happened. And suddenly, three more tentacles would, would stretch out of her back as two of them would grab Bakugo by, by his legs, and the other two would grab him by the waist. As then two more, more tentacles, as then she would grab him by the neck and his knees. As she would begin squeezing, as Bakugo would begin wincing in pain, as he began shaking in fear. As he'd say, what are you doing? What are you doing, you villain? And she would then say, tell them the truth. As she would then squeeze Bakugo, as he would then say, ah, what do you mean? As she would then say, tell them the truth. As she would squeeze him again, as he'd say, I don't know what you're talking about, seriously. As suddenly a bow and arrow would spawn, and as suddenly a bow and arrow would spawn in her, and a bow would spawn in her hand. As she, he would then pull her hand back, as we see a black and pur as we see a black and purple arrow made of black and 
purple of lightning form or I'm right at I'm right in the middle. I'm right at the string of the bow. And she would then say, Now, Bakugo. And she would point directly at his head. And he would then say, Fine, I framed you, alright? I paid off the League of Villains to frame you. And she would then begin shaking. And she would then say, You would pay me. See everyone, I'm no villain. Bakugo is. He paid off the League of Villains to trick and to frame me. But why? As she would look at him. As he'd then say, You are quirkless. You should never have been given that power. You're weak and useless, you infernal freak. As he would look at her. And as he would then say this directly at her face. As she would then begin shaking and trembling. As suddenly, the bow and arrow. And the bow would then transform into a scythe. That was yellow and, and that was mostly black with some yellow. As she would then say, and as she would then look at Bakugo, as she would then drop him and would say, you have 10 seconds to run. I will kill you if I catch you. As Bakugo would bolt out, as she would then begin singing, one, two, one, two, Azul is coming for you. Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, I have an eight. Nine, ten. You'll, ne you'll, you'll never live again. As her body would then begin glowing with a black and yellow aura, as she would then, as in a yellow flash. A yellow and black flash she would disappear from the classroom as we see Bakugo who is who is running out of UA as fast as he possibly can as suddenly out of a as suddenly out of a locker we see a black tentacle spawn and we see a black tentacle burst out of one locker and then another as they are beginning to hop out of the floorboards and out of the, the floor and the ceiling. As she would then say, Katsuki, where are you? As Bakugo would be running and exploding things to escape. As, however, Bakugo would reach a dead end. As he would reach a bath, as he would have been basically lured into a bathroom where he could not escape, as the entrance slash exit to the bathroom would then begin, as it, there would be a black and yellow goop begin, or black and yellow liquid beginning to who corrupt the walls, the ceiling, and the floor. As we see Azula spinning a scythe, walking directly towards Bakugo. As she would then say, Bakugo Katsuki, I hope you know that you, ru that you just ruined my life, and I hope you know that you will never see the light of day again. As she would then say, isn't that right? As suddenly her hand would turn into a giant, giant claw, sort of dragon claw, except 
black with yellow claws. As she would be, as she would then put her hand on the wall, as there would be scratch marks engraving into the walls, as she would then say, I hope you know, Bakugo, what you've done. And I hope you know that you're going to die. As Bakugo would then say, please, no, 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 no! As he would scream in pain. As ten minutes later, Azula is nowhere left. And it's nowhere to be found in UA. All of the black corruption, all of the black and yellow corruption has disappeared. The only trace that she is there, and she was in that bathroom, is the claw marks. As all they see is a small Russian doll. And is a small Russian doll. As they would, as at first, it would look like something black with orange eyes and four horns. And with three orange eyes, two mouths, and four horns. Horns as they would then open Russian doll, revealing inside of it an even smaller Russian doll. This, of course, was a Russian doll of Bakugo. By the way, these are Russian nesting dolls. As they would then put the Bakugo, the Russian nesting doll of Bakugo, back inside of the other. And back inside of the monster looking one. As they would then hear a whimpering coming from um, a stall. As they would then bust down the stall, which was locked and barricaded. As we see a... As we see a man... A... Creature. With... Two, with... Two leg... And with two legs, but three feet. Basically on... The creature's left knee, there is a second... Second... Leg can... Half of a leg connected to a foot. With two, two arms, but five hands. And with two arms and three... I know it. With two hands and three arms. One head, four horns, three eyes, and two mouths. As they would look at this creature that appeared to be covered in all sorts of black ooze or goo. As they would then say, what the hell? As they would then look at the Russian nesting doll and then look at the creature. As they would then open the Russian nesting doll again and they would see the Bakugo doll. As they would then say, I think that thing's Bakugo. As... Let's go to Bakugo's point of view for a moment. Bakugo would be in a black void of darkness. And in this void, he would see what appeared to be Azula. Except her, her skin not just her hair and clothes and eyes, was black and yellow. Her hair was much, and her hair would grow much longer, and it appeared if she was in some sort of armor. As she would then be swinging her scythe in hand and would look directly at Pakugo. As she he would then say, Ah, welcome, Bakugo. Welcome to, the, to this place. 
my private little kingdom of darkness. You like it? Good. Because you're never getting out. <laughs> you're going to sit here and wait until you become insane or, well, you lose yourself entirely to the darkness and you become a mindless, memoryless beast. A shadowy, dark, monstrous shell of who you were. As you would look at him and smile while saying this. As Bakugo would then say, What? What? What you mean? As she would then and say, Oh, well, here's just a little sneak peek for you. As in the real world, the creature with a drop of goo would then lunge off of the creature and onto a mirror. As in the as in the darkness, Bakugo would then be looking through the mirror's point of view, as he'd then see the creature, as he'd then say, "What is that? It looks hideous." Like a monster, a demon. As she would then say, How ironic, that is you. She would say, as Bakugo would then say, What? What did you do to me? As she would then say, Oh, nothing. I merely just made you an obedient slave, mindless, servant. Your only purpose, well, is to fight. Mindlessly fight. Cause violence, pain, and fear. And of course, kill. As she would then say, chuckling. As Wakago would then, would then begin screaming in the darkness, no. No, no, no! As suddenly, the ground or all of Bakugo's surroundings within the darkness would then rise and submerge him inside of the darkness entirely. As she would then say, that fate awaits, awaits anyone who would dare betray me again. As she would then say, as for the others, their time will come. She would say, as in the physical world in class 1A, we see a puddle of black and yellow ooze rise up into a humanoid shape. This, of course, being Izula. As she would then say, uh, Now, here I wait. <laughs> as she would then wait, as eventually all of Class 1A would return. As we see Tokoyami walk over to her as he then says, Hey, you okay? Um, are you seriously? As he is obviously worried. As she would then look at him and say, Oh yes, fine. Just learning some powers and abilities I have. I have new abilities I have gained. As she would then say, Somehow, I was... It appears that Bakugo framed me. Paid the League of Villains top dollar to frame me, actually. And had everyone else, except, well, those who believed me, beat the crap out of me. And as you saw, that apple was my only escape. She would say... 
as Tokoyami would then say, yeah. So, I'm guessing there, you have a lot of darkness now? As she would then say, oh, trust me, it's so much that you would just be submerged entirely in it, or maybe drowned. As she would then laugh, and as she would then say, trust me, he... Bakugo already, Bakugo already knows, knows how deep that darkness is, and I don't think he'll ever be coming out, as she would then say. However, um, well, this is all that's left of him, as she would then snap her fingers as a black and orange puddle would form right next to her, as we then see the freakish demonic creature that was once Bakugo Kotsky form out of the puddle as he then say holy your darkness is so much that you could that you literally drowned him in it as she would then say yeah As, well, we go to America. As we see a familiar song, as we see the number one villain in the world, Nightmare. As suddenly she hears a... As she... It has been one week since the betrayal of Azula Midoriya happened. Now, as she is merely just, you know, looking up things that she he wants to do, basically, like villainous stuff, beating up here, I'm beating the living crap out of heroes, killing and killing a whole bunch of people. As she would be looking through her notes, I, and she'd be looking on a sort of computer, I guess you could say, as there would then be a new email. It would be a news notification, as it would then say, hey, as the headline, I'm hero. Hero in training, aim, aiming framed, and became a monster. As, of course, Nightmare would know all of, all about, one for all and all for one. As she would know that, well, Azula was one for all's apprentice, and was one for all's successor. However, she did not know that she was originally quirkless. As she would then look, as she would then begin and trying to look up pictures, but all it would show on the darn news article was what appeared to be a Russian nesting doll. As she would then say, and as she would then, then become determined to find out what was this that it happened as she of course got a extremely curious as she would then feel something strange as it was in the wide and endless pool of darkness that the two shared but she has no idea that there is another who possesses the same power as her and she would then enter this darkness as, well, her hair would appear longer. She would appear to be in some sort of armor with a crown on, same as Izula, but with a sep and with a spear in hand. As she would be looking around, as she would then notice bubbles coming out of 
one area of the darkness. As she would go there, air. As she would then swim down into the darkness and see Bakugo. As Bak we go to Bakugo, as I'm Bakugo in the darkness, as he takes one glance and is terrified. As Bakugo would then, s as Bakugo, oh, knowing that he's risking his life by speaking, would then say, who are you? As he would then close his mouth to catch his breath, thinking that she was one of the denizens of this dark realm sent to torture him. As she would then say, what are you doing here? Clearly confused, as he, as she would then pull him out of the darkness, I mean, out of, well, the area that he was drowning in, but not entirely out of the darkness. So physically, Bakugo is still that monster. And she would plunge him out of the darkness and onto what appeared to be some sort of black, a beach made out of black and turquoise sand and black and sort of dark blue or turquoise sand as she would then say what are you doing here how'd you even get here here as he would then say hey i framed her 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 i framed her, I framed her. As Nightmare would then say, Hold up, who did you frame? As he would then say, Azula. As. Well, no, he would then say, I, I framed her, I framed her, I framed her, I framed her, I framed her. As she re then realized that Bakugo's mind was so destroyed already that he could not say anything else, but I framed her. As she would then open her hand and would touch his forehead, looking through his memories. As she would then see Bakugo with his explosion cork rush at the wounded Azula. And then she would see her eat an apple. As she would then find out that Azula was originally corkless. She would then see Azula become a black and yellow version of herself. As she would then say, huh. hmm. This girl, Azula, I think her name is. She's just like me, quirkless and turned into a monster. But what was she doing at UA? As she would then be scrolling through even more of Bakugo's memories. As after she was done scrolling through Bakugo's memories, she would be shaking as one of her, as her hands would be in fists. And would be fists as she would then punch, punch Bakugo back into the sort of dark shadowy water and she would then grab him by the neck and plunge him all the way down as far as she could as she would then reach back to the beach and would say that fool dare frame someone for dare pay off villains to frame someone for nothing they did wrong just because they were offered power just because they were pure and noble and were given power and then has people torture this person to the point, point of pos of near death as she would then think but how did she get but how did that person get an apple as she would then leave the darkness and the plane of darkness and would Began looking through her ref refuge.
the American government base, as which was now her supervillain base, as it would then say, Planetary Protection Project, as she would then begin reading notes, as the first one would then say, this is... This is entry one of the Planetary Protection Project, or the Triple P. The reason why we are creating this project is because a tree has formed, formed in the middle of Greenland with two black apples hanging from it. We have tested them and we see that they are filled with some sort of dark energy that can give people abilities at the price of their hue, and the price of most of, and of their personality in exchange for a new and more dark one. As you, she would then read the notes, as it would then say, we are transferring the second apple to our base in Japan, while we're keeping the first one here. As she would then realize that if they had any sort of similar childhood, that the, that Izula would have been running from people and would have found the base on accident. But instead of devouring it entirely, she must have not seen any labeling. And so, oh, she would not eat the apple right away until it was absolutely needed. As Nightmare would then say, hmm, well, looks like I'm going to, well, looks like I'm going to Japan. After all, this Azula chick seems cool and beautiful at that. As she would then, as her cheeks would then blush with a dark, with a turquoise blue, as she would then say, anyways, his next stop, Japan, as she would then turn into a puddle and would vanish into the earth and vanish into the ground, as she would be heading to Japan. If that's where I'm ending this part off, hope y'all have enjoyed part one of what if female Deku found a apple. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And if you like this and you want more, please give me 50 likes. Yes, sorry. 50 likes on each video. And if there is 50 likes within the first three hours of the video being uploaded, I'll make a part two. So 50 likes in the first three hours. All right. So please like, share, comment, subscribe, and... Uh, yeah, bye and uh, skadoosh.